The show starts off by raining on you, followed by kind of neat but ultimately pointless laser effects. Uh, tropical laser beam, laser beam dumb, uh. And speaking of blandness, I'm sure this is a perfectly nice hotel to stay at, but there's not much to make it worth just visiting. It's hard to weave much Disney magic when your theme is an ordinary modern day hotel. Plus, apparently, if we stay here too long, we grow extra limbs. I'll save you! <gasps> at first glance, this looks remarkably similar to the Grand Floridian, the same sort of old-timey area, hotel, and pool, and holy crap, demon clown face vomiting children run for your life! <laughs> That monster's gonna give me nightmares. The girl is so cute. Yes, yeah, so unlike you, perfectly normal circus clowns. Gotta have blue hair. This particular Legoland was built on the former site of Cypress Gardens, a combination amusement park, botanical garden, water ski showcase arena, which opened in 1936 and has a long history of closing and reopening and reclosing and changing owners, passing between such corporate behemoths as Anheuser Busch and Adventure Parks Group before its 2009 closure. For real this time. Only to be purchased by Merlin and reopened as Legoland in 2011. Put the white stuff on the hot stuff! Isn't it a bit more complicated yeah. than that? No, if there's anything hot, you grab anything wet and use that! I hope. Oh, my computer's a little warm. Quickly, grab the wet stuff! Apply liberally. So then our live not Arnold fights our CGI liquid metal guy and attacks him by blowing up liquid nitrogen. We'll freeze him out! And then there's a bird. That is an ugly board. And while this land isn't tied to a specific movie or franchise, it is home to that most beloved of theme park characters, the annoying talking fountain with the staticky speaker system. Simon says, look up in the sky. Gotcha. <laughs> well, I never. <laughs> Bernadine the countryside is a very rude activity, young lady. Why, I oughta. The cheat, the cheat is in the house. Who's the man that looks like the cheat? But then they decided to give it a plot. Now this is Disaster Studios, where low-budget, schlocky disaster flicks are produced by Frank Kincaid, a renegade filmmaker played by, oh, hell yes. So, what attractions do they have here? Well, they have the two that used to be part of Lost Continent. There's Dragon Challenge, which used to be called Dueling Dragons. And I still call it Dueling Dragons, because I happen to think that's a much cooler name than Dragon Challenge. It's just a roller coaster playing Twister with another roller coaster, but now the backstory is the Triwizard Tournament, and the queue is decorated accordingly. But the the ride itself is the usual hunk of steel in a fenced off area that gives you an unfortunate view of backstage. When the second best ride in your themed area is also one of the very few rides that by its very nature breaks that theming, it's not quite a deal breaker, but it is a reminder that flawless perfection can never truly be achieved and we should all just stop trying. Isn't that right? Glitchy editing, glitchy editing, glitchy editing, glitchy editing, glitchy editing. Both cars used to launch at the same time, hence the dueling part of the name, but apparently at some point Universal became became more concerned with safety than with awesomeness. Then there's Fly to the Hippogriff, which used to be called the Flying Unicorn. Giddy roller coaster. Still the same thing. But at least now it's nicely decorated with an animatronic buck beak. Anyway, so... Party and party, 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 it's the weekend! Party, 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 and we'll party in! Party, 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 everybody just see us!